Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp. And today we're going to be learning about GUI, at least GUI for the Windows Form element. And GUI stands for the Graphical User Interface, which makes sense because this is graphical and it's the user interface because that's what the user will be uh, browsing around in. Okay, so let's uh, look at these. So basically, I'm going to go through as many of these as I can, even though there's three or four I don't actually know. Uh, so let's start out with, uh, and menus will be in the next tutorial, so let's do containers. I'll just show you the group box. I'm really pressed on time for this, so I'm just going to uh, go quickly in this, because that's pretty easy. So we can change the text that appears there. We can call it radio group, and that's where I'm going to put radio buttons later in the tutorial. But basically, you can put some form elements in there to make it look nice. There's a faint border. This does appear, so just bear that in mind. And let's create a simple button because that's at the top. And let's call it, let's say, BTN Enter. This is probably the only one in which I'll actually specify the labels' names and what is printed because I'm pressed on time. That's uh, too tedious. It takes too too much time. So I just want to show you that if you put, if you drag a control over the group box, then you copy the group box itself and paste it. It'll not only create a duplicate of that group box, but it'll also copy all the controls that you have in it. So that's really really convenient but I don't want it up there. Okay, so the first one I'd like to show you are checkboxes. So checkboxes are basically where the user can check as many as you want, and it doesn't really matter where you place them. Radio buttons, it does matter where you place them, so I'll uh, show that to you. So the name of them is checkbox1, checkbox1, so whatever on that. So let's figure out how we can see if we figure out how we know if a user has them highlighted or not. Well, in order to do that, we create an if statement. In order to check, we just type out checkbox dot checked, and that's it, just to see if it's checked. Remember, you can also use logical operators, so like ands and ors, to see if they have multiple of that checkbox, or multiple checkboxes checked or not. But let's just create a simple message box dot show, and have it say, um, first checkbox, since we're checking to see if the first one was checked or not and we'll have it say uh, output next. Save and that's it. So if we have nothing checked, nothing happens, if we have the first one checked, uh, first checkbox. But since it's only checking for the first one, it doesn't matter if you have other ones checked, it's still gonna come out true because it's only looking for that first one. So bear that in mind. So the next one I'd like to show you is, oh, can't see the controls in there. So the next one I'd like to show you is the check list box, throw that on there and we just, I'll just move over here, go down to the items and we can add an items in there so go item 1, item 2, item 3, just like that, click OK and there's all of our items, so how do you check to see if any are um, checked there? Let's give this thing a name, checklist box, okay so it's checklist box let's make this a comment since I don't want to activate that code and, oh whoops, that's a visual basic comment there we go. And let's do a simple if statement. So if. And we're going to want to activate that check list box. So check list box. So check list. Oh, it's not coming out. There it is. Check list box. And then for the check list box, what you're going to want to look for is dot. So if we're next, you type it dot, then checked items. Whoops checked items dot contains and then you want to throw in the string of what you're looking for so you want to look for let's go item 2 shall we and if it contains item 2 which we have one that says item ooh, it's lowercase that's gonna be serious so item 2 then we can just copy this right here so I'll just click copy and I'll paste it so it'll be the same message box and I'll run the application and uh, just click enter nothing happens you have item 2 whoops gotta hit it twice there we go and there we go, first checkbox. So that worked. So that's your checklist box. Uh, the next thing I have to show you is the combo box. This will be, this is a drop down menu basically. So we'll go to our collection again. And we'll go, let's say, um, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And how this works is it uses indices. So um, you don't see it by default when you run it, but you'll see the items down there. So in order to look at the selected index, uh, basically what we're going to do is first comment this out, and 
make an if statement down here and look for the name of that combo box. So is it just combo box? Combo combo box one dot then selected index. I'm going to use selected item now. Use selected index and see what that's equal to. So let's look for the second element, which will be index number one, and let's create another message box that pops up, and we'll have it say so that lunch was the second one, right? So we'll have here's lunch. So I click save, and then I'll run this again. So nothing happens like that. But if we go lunch, and that says here's lunch. So that's really really cool. Uh, so what's the next one we're going to be doing? Date time picker will be when I do dates, which is the next video. Label, we've done labels. Okay, link label. So let's create a link label. We'll call it... So this is the link color. You can use the default link color. You have visited right here. So if it's visited, you have your default purple. You can change it if you want. And then active is while you're holding it down. So, okay. So we can make... Uh, actually mess with the code with this one. So let's double click this one. And in order to make a link with a link... Uh, Oh yeah, um, system. Oops, yeah, system dot diagnostics dot process. Oh, it's all highlighted for me, um, automatically for me. That's really nice. Okay, so system dot diagnostics dot process to start, then throughout the URL. Whoops, HTTP www dot I don't know Yahoo dot com. And basically, it's going to start this. Uh, oh, it has been a string. Sorry about that. And basically, it's going to start out that uh, URL for you in your default browser. So I'll run this. I click the link label. And no, as you can see, I'm using Opera here, not Firefox as usual. And there you go. And as you can see, I'm watching a bunch of Let's Plays of Ocarina of Time by K6 Scope. I should probably mention him since that was his page. Uh, okay, so. Okay, I wasn't expecting that, but. So that's your link label there. That's how those work. And what's the next one? I'll show you. Um, link label list box. I done this. List box. Oh yeah, I've done list boxes. <laughs> That's like episode seven or something. Long time ago. Uh, so list box. List view is kind of complicated. It's not complicated. It just takes a long time to explain. Tedious. Um, no um, mass task box. I've never used that, so I don't even know how to use that one. Month calendar. That's more of dates. So dates and dates will be another time. I think I'll show you that in the next tutorial. Notify icon. Nope. And numeric up and down. This basically the same increments up by one every time, and you can make the default value whatever you'd like. So if I make like the default value of 50 or something, then um, you can also set the maximum, the highest number it can increment up to. And where's the minimum? Oh, and there's the increment. So you can make it increment by two if you wish, if you'd like. And where's the minimum? Oh, minimum is oh, it's right next to each other. So you have minimum, and you have the maximum up here. So I'm just going to go with the regular, and in order to use it, basically let's comment this out, and make an if, and let's check for two. So let's see if numeric up and down one dot value is greater than or equal to 60. So we're going to look for two of them, and whoops and numeric up and down one dot value is less than 100 and basically we can have a message box pop up here so if we're anywhere from 60 to 99 basically um, we can have it say you didn't fail but you didn't get in a plus Ooh. Wow, that's uh, very rude. So let's go to our numeric up and down. We click enter, nothing happens. If we get up to 659, I think nothing will happen, but 60 it will work. You didn't fail, but you didn't get an A+. Plus. And that will happen, I think we can uh, put it in manually. So I could go 99th, enter, there we go. So we still got that, and if we go up to 100 then we no longer get it, because it's strictly less than 100, which is the A+. Plus. Okay, so that's our numeric up and down. I'll comment that out. And back here, so we did that. Now let's do a picture box. All right, these are pretty uh, interesting. 
So in order to use a picture box, let's go down and go to image. So we have no image in there. And let's import an image. So I'm going to import my, from my, my pictures, this smiley that, if you watch my web development videos, you know this guy too well. So we imported it and then click OK. And there it is. So it doesn't fit in here, but you know, you can always move it around. Let's have him peek through this window at us. Okay, so we've done the picture box, progress bar, I'm going to skip that one. And now radio buttons. Ooh, these are big ones. So let's copy and paste a bunch of these. So copy and paste, drag it up there. Um, drag. And I'm going to move this one down and make another one and have it outside of the, the box. Now, in order to use checkboxes, it's the exact same as the, or excuse me, radio buttons. It's the same as checkboxes. So you just see if it's dot checked. However, bear in mind that you can only have one checked at a time, except for in certain uh, scenarios. As you can see here, all these radio buttons are grouped together in this group box, so you can only select one at a time. However, one outside the group box, um, it's not within the same control, so it acts as its own group. So this one's guy, this guy's by itself. So bear that in mind when you're checking to see if, which ones are checked or not. And what's next? So we did radio button rich text box is basically by default a text box but it's multi-line so that's cool things you can do with that just you can just take the value or the text that's inside it it's not really anything so I'm just gonna delete it um, and just like with a text box remember you can always hit this thing hit multi-line and then from there you can expand it and whatnot but I'm just gonna delete it and next is tooltip um, you know what let me uh, let me actually get rid of it first okay so if I highlight this and I go down here there's no tooltip option down here for any of these. There's no tooltip, anything. So if we hit tooltip here and we click anywhere in our form and, and once we created it, if we go to our button for say and we go to the bottom, now we have a tooltip option. And that's basically a text box that pops up uh, when you hover over it. So click this button to validate data. So if we run this application and hover over the button, we now get it to say, click this button to validate data. So that's really, really cool. And so we did tooltip, tree view, I don't know what that is, I don't know how to use those. Uh, and then the web browser is the last one I want to show you. That uses Internet Explorer by default, of course. Any .NET language uses, uh, is, is all Microsoft stuff. So I'll hit the web browser, pop it here, and let's modify this guy. There we go, and you can always change the default URL. So we have a tooltip, but you can also change the URL. So, whoops, HTTP, www. Let's go Google this time. So now Google's in there, and if we run this application, we'll see that Google is now here in this little thing, the whole website. And then we can search for stuff. I type in like Yahoo or something. I hit Yahoo and now on Yahoo's page. So that's about it for this tutorial. Um, uh, just a whole bunch of different things to show you. Uh, we, we've we already done the open file dialog and save file dialog in the last video and the printing is, I don't know if I'll ever do that because I don't see the point. Um, this is all ASP. either web application stuff or ASP.NET or database stuff. So that's going to be my level 2 playlist, all these guys. And menus will be in the next tutorial. So I hope, and the so dates. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.